So this was a very short uh, version of what we call uh, the Ohanda Gullywadikwa, which I'm having a hard time because... <laughs> um, and what it is, is what we do before all gatherings, be all, before all important meetings, and, and for events like this. So the game of lacrosse, or Dewa Aladun to the Haudenosaunee people, is very important. And one thing that you must remember that this is a truly medicine game. You guys are, are you young ladies are all blessed. And you should be proud of yourselves. Just remember, my daughter is out here. My nieces are out here. Your daughters are out here. So it's good to cheer them on, but be respectful. And now, Thank you very much, Ron. And now, ladies and gentlemen, could you please rise and remove your caps and join me in welcoming Dr. Kat Struess, a global anthem specialist and U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel retired. Dr. Kat will be honoring both Canada and the United States of America with her renditions of O Canada and the Star Spangled Banner. O Canada.
welcome to Tierney Field at U.S. Lacrosse Headquarters in Sparks, Maryland for the 2023 Fall Classic. Hello, everyone. I'm Monica Moore alongside Glenn Clark. And, Glenn, this is such an accumulation of fantastic talent. The Canada U-20 team versus the U.S. U-20 team. So many amazing players and perhaps a little more importance to this event even than in the past with the recent announcement, the LA 28 committee announcing that lacrosse in the form of sixes being considered for the 2028 games. And expected to be formalized in the coming days. This, Monica, really is a celebration of the sport in one of the most seismic moments in the history of the sport. And what you're alluding to, for these young women on the field, they're thinking about their future on a senior national team to compete in a world championship event. They're absolutely thinking about the possibility of being among the first in the in a very long time. It's been over 100 years to represent their country in the Olympics. It's an incredible moment that we're standing on right now. It really is. It's been one of the most talked about things of this week, really building up to this event in terms of the anticipation. This is really a lot of people feel like a long time coming in terms of the advocacy, all the great ambassadors of the sport who have been pushing for this moment. And now for these young women that love Love this game so much just looking to the future that opportunity to represent their countries at the olympics the sport of lacrosse has not been represented in olympics since 1908 in london it's only ever happened twice in the history of the olympics this is as significant a moment as there is and to your point, all these young women, they all have their own individual goals, their club teams, the colleges they're playing for. They all have all those things. But every single one of them that comes here now knows they're on the radar. They're in the mix. They're in the pool of players that could be getting this opportunity. And this is an opportunity in front of the eyes of USA Lacrosse or Team Canada, Canada Lacro Lacrosse Canada, to show we should be moving towards 2028 in the Los Angeles Olympics. Let's go ahead and start talking about some of the players who are going to be out on the field and you see there for the united states cameron callahan what a year she had for cincinnati really i think on everyone's radar in terms of her scoring ability an incredible season the freshman of the year in the american athletic conference 47 goals 59 points for callahan she'll try to build off that as a sophomore and in the draw control circle on the opening draw for, Team USA, for Canada, Canada, number 120, Canada, Jillian, number 120 Goldie, Jillian Goldie, one to keep your eyes on this afternoon. Of course, in women's lacrosse, the draw controls, one of the biggest statistics and having those players who are fantastic at controlling the draw and working so well with their draw control units of critical importance and you see great battle for possession and it's Jillian McNaughton oh, that comes up with it for Canada. Jillian McNaughton's got to be very excited about playing here. Of course, a redshirt freshman getting ready to play at Johns Hopkins. She has lots of international experience, one of the veterans on this Canada U-20 roster. And this is Goldie right here for Canada looking perhaps to go 1v1 but some great defense by the u.s just cutting off any opportunities there hannah rudolph with some nice early defensive play for the u.s and bridget duffy too was one of the players i was most excited about seeing this weekend as well a all patriot league first team performer a year ago at army haslam with the first goal the contest Canada did not waste very much time Rylan Haslam coming around from the back and scoring Haslam. take another look here just an aggressive first step back from behind the goal and that good angle absolutely nothing the defense could do there Rylan Haslam what a way to make your name known here at this event. Yeah, for Haslam, who's just a high school senior still, hasn't even started playing collegiate lacrosse. She gets to score on a goalie from Virginia Tech and Jocelyn Torres, who was on the ACC All-Freshman team. So that'll really boost her confidence moving forward. Madison Epke in the draw control circle for Team USA. She's another really special talent in the circle. Had a great season at James Madison in her freshman campaign. And you see there just with the self draw, how well she controls 
what she's doing. You can't do it much cleaner than that, Absolutely Monica. not. And frankly, to have that ability, because everything's so contested, if you can just have the self-draw where it's not even on the ground, a battle for it, Madison Epke has really perfected the art of being in the draw control circle. Team USA looking to quickly answer, but a great defensive stand for Canada. Brittany Colangelo quickly bringing the ball up the field. Well, Poliski just ran into a bunch of traffic and it leads to an opportunity the other way, not cashed in. Avery Morton did such a nice job pushing down the field, creating that option. That was a great find, an unselfish play by Colangelo and Canada. They're really forcing the issue early on, and Team Canada with the second goal of the contest. They're doing such a good job making good decisions. Emily Dodd with her first goal of the competition. Dot a freshman preparing oh, for her oh, first oh, season oh, at oh. Colorado. She's playing for Team oh. Alberta. And right now, they are not really messing around. It's always interesting when you get into international rules and international play to see how teams adjust to that. Players who maybe aren't used to it or haven't played in it much, but they are going right to work and going right on goal. Jillian Goldie coming back out on the field for Canada to head to the draw control circle. So draws even right now. One for the U.S., one for Canada. This atmosphere is unbelievable, Monica. Like, it is packed here. Fans of all of these teams saw before the game some of the youth players are participating in the Brogdon Cup. We're out on the field with their fellow country women. It's an awesome scene. I really... As, as you said, love the atmosphere here. There's a lot of fans, a lot of vendors here, a lot of just great things for families to come and watch. What a stop there for Team Canada. That is a big play by Lauren Spence back in goal for Canada. And again, what strikes me is how quickly Canada gets up the field and sets up their offense. They are going in transition very quickly. And again, an interesting shot selection from further out from Wiseman, the Maryland Terrapin, a top, former top 10 national recruit, pulling the trigger from, ah, boy, a good seven or so out. Another strong, aggressive move towards the goal for Lauren Black, but it is shut down by the defense. But there is just such good off-ball movement right now from Canada. Lots of players working around, trying to create options. And Monica, when we talk about players who could be on the radar in the Olympics as the whistle's away from the ball, and it's going to be a foul and a free position opportunity. But Black stands out significantly among players who could be looking to an Olympic future. She was part of the World Games roster that played the sixes format a year ago in Birmingham where they won the gold medal. Free position opportunity here for Canada. They elect not to fire the shot. They were looking for a better opportunity for Emily Dodd, but a good defensive play as Jocelyn Torres comes up with it for Team USA and quickly up the field. This goes back to the change in the international rules. Again, it's 11 meters for the free, free position and not eight, so it's not quite the same given that it is, say, collegiately that a player is going to go on goal and get a shot off. A lot of time, or at least a little bit more time for defenses to collapse. And that's one of, I think, the biggest adjustments in terms of playing with these rules. Great look inside. We're going to get another whistle and an opportunity coming up here for Team USA. Strong move to the goal by Madison Smith, who won that last draw control as well so Madison Smith coming up with some good moments in the first quarter of this one and once again you see her a bit further out than we're used to seeing and again Smith will look for the cutter around the goal and Team USA is on the scoreboard with Maggie Wiseman that is about as perfect as you can execute a free position on the international level Wiseman makes one cut right in front of the goal wastes no time and tucks it in just underneath the bar that is about perfection again I'm just very impressed with Madison Smith so far in this contest number 38 in white who gets the assist there Assisted by number Great 38, vision. Madison Smith. Unselfish play, and that's exactly what you have to do. 
it's it's and look they probably got some time in this morning ahead of today's game but when you have stepped out of international rules for a little while and you're focused on collegiately it's difficult to get right back in and not think about going to goal that's perfection that is something that you've got to absolutely have a feel for in that moment okay where is my help let's get the ball there on the spot allowing Wiseman to put it home and really the bright spot right now for Team USA is the draw control wins and quickly they get up the field. The Madisons, Madison Epke, Madison Smith doing a good job and another USA goal by number 19, Alexis Ventresca. Getting to play for her upcoming head coach, Kelly Amante Hiller. And she's gonna be a Northwestern Wildcat. Of course already reported to school, but we're playing in the spring. And again, just a nice, aggressive Team USA play. Goal. There was a lot of defense That's there. The, that was highly that's contested. The, that's the funny thing as I watch it again, is there wasn't a lot of room there at all, but she just kept her head down going towards goal and got a great shot off. And back in the draw control circle for Team USA, Madison Epke, who has found a lot of success in the early goings of this one. Again, it's been the Madisons, Madison Epke, Madison Smith for Team USA, and that's been the difference maker because Canada's been very aggressive. They've taken advantage of the opportunities, but Team USA right now is just controlling control, the draw control controls. Got to control your emotions on a day like this, too. This is USA-Canada that we're talking about. This is the best rivalry in international lacrosse, and while this might not be the World Championships or the Olympics or the World Games, they don't get so many opportunities throughout the year to compete U.S. versus Canada, so you got to keep your emotions in check even in front of an electric atmosphere, everybody's fired up. These teams have come out firing in this game. Well, that's right. And as a young lacrosse player, this is your dream to play on an international stage. And because you've grown up watching the U.S. play Canada. Perfect. And once again, just great ball movement and the finish by Abigail Locasio. And give Ventresca credit, she allowed Lacasio to come clear Team as we USA watch it again. She waits for the perfect Lacasio. time, and then you see the cut come, and she puts it right on the spot for Lacasio moving to her left to be able to shoot cross body. And Glenn, you made the point earlier about how there's not a lot of time to practice, to prepare. These athletes, they don't play together on a regular basis, but we're seeing some pretty good chemistry, and that just comes from, again, growing up in the sport of lacrosse, you play on lots of different teams, you have lots of different teammates, and you have that ability to work with other players that you're not as familiar with their style with their tendency but you can still do a good job connecting with them and putting them in good scoring positions also worth pointing out monica we see the clock moving there on the screen and one of the other international rules is the running clock and so you can't afford to fall behind too much because it's a lot more difficult in the international game to rally from down four or five goals in the second half with that clock run. And I think right now Canada's just trying to find an answer for Team USA in the draw control circle because now it's point. Madison Smith right now. Whether it's Epke or Smith, they've both been outstanding. The tale of two Madisons, really important block there after Rudolph had gotten free. As you said, great defense by Brianna Gondrede. And again, Canada trying to quickly get up the field, I think realizing that if they can create an unsettled situation, that's where they can be most dangerous. Very good defensive pressure from they, the U.S. They put on a clearing clinic today, Monica. Like they have cleared with ease today. It's really been a lot of fun to watch, and I guess we get a little spoiled. You somewhat come to expect this at this level as Canada with a quick answer by Lauren Black. We knew she was not going to stay quiet for long. I, I think she had three defenders have a shot at her. I don't know how she hung on to the ball and kept on her feet. Watch this again. Okay, one. Now she's going to come circle back around. And watch this daring move. Stay the first defender. Second one comes through. The third one never picked her up. So she just had to hold on. No, the third one did come pick her up. Right at the end. It was Jordan Harrison. Three defenders had a shot on her. She's able to hold on to that ball and get the tying goal. It's because she's Lauren Black, and she's just that phenomenal. We've watched her do it throughout her career. I've gotten to watch her play a lot in the Big East, and she is just one to watch all the time yeah, first two seasons at denver all she's done is 91 goals 118 points she's okay is that all? 
<laughs> She's okay, Monica. And Madison Epke just continuing to do what she does so well. We knew she was going to be impressive today. We saw what she did in her freshman season at James Madison, where she was the only freshman to start. And I'm just not surprised to see her perform this well at the international level because she is truly special at her art in the draw control circle. I gotta be honest with you, Monica, I was a little bit prepared for, because as we've referenced, you don't have a lot of time together. I was prepared for things to maybe be a little sloppy <laughs> to start this game. Young players, big stage, it has been anything, but it's been very sharp. Well, it, I think that's right. And perhaps it is with the big announcement that these players, they're coming to really show well as that shot goes over top of the net for Lindsey Devere, who's another very exciting youngster coming into the college game. A lot of people certainly expecting big things from her and a strong move by Maggie Weissman will earn the free position opportunity. It was interesting they showed a different look on that last free position. Instead of going to the cutter, coming off the goal line, they stayed with another teammate on the arc. Be interesting to see how they continue to operate there. So this is Weissman. You see her quickly picked up by the defenders, so she's going to cycle back and hand off. But, Glenn, to your point about how it could have been sloppy, it has not been, I think what's really stood out to me the most are the good decisions that you're seeing from the players on the field, the high lacrosse IQ. Talk about a defensive clinic right there by Jonas Smelly. Absolutely feeling the moment. Jenna Smelly, still a high school senior at Crestwood Prep. That was Devere on that diving shot. Backed up by Team USA. Get these opportunities, a young player. The other thing that we keep pointing out, we're still five years away from the Olympics. So these young players have lots of time to keep developing within the program while getting their name on the radar. But for a high school senior, you're talking about somebody who's going to be in their early 20s by that point and very much a factor, perhaps, for inclusion on the Olympic team. That was a great catch in traffic under pressure by Devere. Take a look at all these defenders who are just going to crowd around Devere. A little bit of a buddy pass. And she <laughs> catches that and hangs on. This is Devere trying to push forward. The defense was all over it. Very physical play. A lot of contact there. Nothing called. I respect it. But that was the first time that we've seen a free position take where the, the taker was going on goal and not looking to pass. Meanwhile, Brienne Bresnitsky did such a great job on that clear in Team Canada pretty quickly going to work. Team Canada goal scored by Alexi number Jenkins. 23, Alexis Jenkins. Incoming freshman at Oregon has played here at the Brogdon Cup before for Team Ontario. Trying to move forward in the Canadian or the Lacrosse Canada program. Really impressive tally here. It's just a great shot selection. Tucking it inside. And back in the draw control circle is Jillian Goldie for Team Canada, who, again, I think they have to be happy with the fact that they are not controlling the draw controls, but they have the lead in this contest. They've been doing a lot of other things really well, but what the U.S. has dominated are the draws. It's Madison Smith back in the circle and just working very well with her oh, teammate there, Bridget, Bridget Duffy. Duffy. We got to talk about the season that Bridget Duffy had at Army, Monica. Bridget Duffy, all she did was become the first ever All-American <laughs> in the history of the Army program, despite being a freshman. 82 points, a new single season record in program history. 56 goals, leading all freshmen nationally. Bridget Duffy very much earned her opportunity to get here and compete with the national team and show that she can take a step forward. She was really one of the ones out of an amazing class of freshmen. She was truly a standout last year. Good vision there. Under 30 seconds, not a lot of time to waste. U.S. looking to regroup. Oh. Great shot selection for Team USA. It is Aliyah Poliski. Team USA goals for Red shirt freshman Aliyah at Stanford, Poliski. knowing that there was not a lot of time left. 19 seconds, in fact. Just making her move, darting inside, getting free, going up top to score. So 19.9 
seconds remaining on the clock. Madison it's Etkin. An entertaining quarter. <laughs> it really like has. That. It has flown by. And I think it's because you just feel like you could just watch this for days and days and days. It has been so much fun to see the level of talent. And again, these players are bringing it. They are leaving everything out there on the field. Once again, Madison Epke put that ball into space that she felt like only she could get to, but then was not able to cleanly pick up the ball. But Team USA will get the draw anyway. Kind of had to force it there with the clock running. Going to earn one more opportunity here. 7.8 seconds left. So Team USA, an opportunity to potentially take the lead before the end of the first quarter. Alexis Ventresca. Whatever you're doing, you've got to do it in a flash. She's going to hand off. Sidearm shot goes wide. Duffy had a lot of heat on the shot. And that will end our very exciting first quarter of play. We are all tied up for all these two teams doing everything they can to represent well. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back to the Fall Classic at Tierney Field. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you a future, a future, a future, a future. <laughs> A first quarter of lacrosse we just witnessed the Canada U-20 team the US U-20 team they were both so dynamic out on the field we talked a lot about it the draw controls were really the storyline for Team USA for Team Canada I think it was just how aggressive and assertive they were on the offensive end of the field and they're clearing Monica their transition game was on point in that first quarter they did not waste any time or allow the US to get the ball back when they turned the ball over when they got a defensive stop they were right down the other side of the field and right into their offense and that's what would press me most again for a group of players that does not play together regularly to be that sharp and that communicative to know where you want to go in the clearing game that was a very impressive display from team canada and frankly obviously in lacrosse you focus a lot on the offense the goal scoring but we saw some great defensive moments too some very good 1v1 defending and disrupting and help defense just so much good stuff to talk about out on the field canada is going to go with lexi jenkins in the draw control circle again they're trying to find the answer as madison smith is back in the circle for team usa jocelyn torres back out in goal for team usa as well and lauren spence stays in we were talking during the break and thinking that maybe a goalie change might happen at halftime lauren spence another player who was part of that gold medal winning 
2022 World Game Sixes performance, and that absolutely has to start putting you on the radar, perhaps being a part of the first ever Olympic team. And of course, she had a fantastic college season as well. When you look at the numbers, what she did at Loyola. And for her career, she's over 50%, 51.8% for her career, um, two seasons now, nearby Loyola University, very impressive Lauren Spence. Strong move towards goal, but excellent defending, just not allowing a pathway for Bridget Duffy, who is so dynamic on the offensive end. It seemed like she thought better of it. it for a second, it seemed like she was going kamikaze style. <laughs> just go in, let's see what we can pull off. But discretion, the better part of Valor, keeps the possession going to get the free position opportunity. Well, we talked about that earlier in terms of the decision-making, and frankly, I think that's one of the biggest things the coaches are looking for as we get a great take there by number 29, Maggie Wiseman. She's been fantastic in this event so far. The second goal of the day, and again, we saw a little bit of a change late in the first quarter where despite it being 11 meters, they started to say, let's let's take one-on-one -on -one and go in and try to score. Maggie Wiseman converts that free position for her second goal of the afternoon. And I think you have to be versatile. You have to mix it up. You can't let the defense get too used to what you're sure. doing. And we're certainly seeing some changes there but back to the earlier point i think for for the coaches who are going to be start starting to think about what teams are going to look like in the future that lacrosse iq the decision making knowing the right thing to do in the right moment that's one of the biggest things that you want to see and certainly madison epke continuing to show oh, how oh strong epke. she is in the circle as she draws the foul and gets them right into their offense and right to the 11 meter again and it, it's an interesting point you bring up, Monica, because the sixes game in particular is even quicker. This is already the fastest sport on two feet. <laughs> right now you're making it even quicker in a smaller field, less players. Oh, that was overruled. So go the other way. As Team Canada will push up the field. but And I think that's one reason that sixes is, is such a fan-friendly sport. The fans absolutely love it because of the pace all the action and excitement out on the field and certainly I think makes it the perfect type of sport for the Olympics. Canada, rare missed you there, but able to hang on to possession. Finding themselves down by one, really first time they found themselves down today. Great play outside of goal by Jocelyn Torres, just stepping forward getting into the mix i'll tell you one of the interesting things too is that with no possession clock we have not seen either team choose to hold the ball for very long and i, I don't know if that's the nature of the event it being the fall classic hey we want to see these players seeing them hold the ball doesn't do a whole lot for us or if it's just you know this is the style that we want to play within the national program as we see a little bit more effort here from canada trying to slow down this clear well and i think when you're playing and Front of such a big crowd they really want to see that and they certainly yeah. have been very loud very involved in the event so far and i think that just pushes you to really want to provide some of those fantastic moments that the fans will remember it's also worth pointing out too monica that while we're still a few years away from the next world championships the next u20 championships are next year next summer in hong kong china so some of these players probably will no longer be in the U-20 mix, but for a lot of the younger players, some of the high school players that are out there that we're talking about, they're very much interested in being a part of a world championship culture for next summer. It really is, I think, the big thing on the radar for the youngsters who will be eligible for that team. Canada, nice move there just to create an opening. Ashlyn Dwandar plays a Canisius earning that free position opportunity. Canada, again, we see they're not, and I really do think a lot of this is probably coaching for Kelly Monte Hiller and her staff saying, look, we want to see you play. We're not really interested in seeing you hold the ball. And it was a good idea there. How? Looking to connect. And How did that shot get off, though? I'm still mesmerized by what we just saw. Morgan White was doing everything she could, but now Canada will find the back of the net. Some good persistence there by Morgan White. Team Take Canada another look here. 146. Morgan, Morgan White. White just all over the place over the last few moments. And that shot selection as well. 
was very well done. Great crossbody shot and that great first deke to, to faking to her right before moving to the left. She did a great job of getting free. I'm still trying to figure out, though, there is somebody wearing number 46, and it's not number 146, and we don't have a 46 on our roster, so we have to apologize for who it is because that was one of the more athletic plays I've seen in a very long time. So back in the draw control circle is Lexi Jenkins for Canada against Madison Smith. I was just informed it was Zoe Kruger wearing number 46. She's listed as 124 on our roster, and I, you never know what happens with uniforms, but it's Zoe Kruger from Stony Brook, who was the one that somehow got down and got to that ball and was able to get off a shot in that situation. That was remarkable. Meanwhile, Madison Smith with another draw control win for Team USA. FK and Smith really have been the X factor today, getting the U.S. a lot of extra possessions as that shot deflected. Duffy did well to get in front and get free, and she should have had a really good scoring opportunity. That's a great trail. Ball will remain with Team USA. Coming onto the field is Taya Keast for Team Canada. And did not see that they had called the shooting space violation. All right, we'll take back the over effusive praise. So Duffy, once again, going inside, kick save for Team Canada by Lauren Spence. Ever so capable, Lauren Spence. And again, for these goalies, it's got to be a reprieve to know you got a couple more steps to be thinking about, maybe having help in these free position situations. It's a gift to goalies going to the international game. Jordan Harrison quickly getting to the ball for Team USA, and you see how quickly Alexis Ventresca can push the ball up the field, but we've got a whistle. She step out is the question. All right, the stick came to the back. She was tight roping that sideline. She line. was. Great athleticism just to make sure she stays on the field. Great pass, Bridget Duffy, but we've got a whistle. So she's going to come out and get... Oh, I guess must have been away from the ball, yeah. Or a dangerous okay. play there. One of the two. It didn't seem like she had much of a windup on that. That seemed like a pretty quick shot. I'm not exactly sure what the call was there, but regardless, it will be Team Canada's ball and an opportunity to once again retake the lead. And because Canada is not winning the draw controls, they're really having to get their possessions off of their defense. Their defense has been so critical. And this is Zoe Kruger right here, who we were just talking about, who is wearing number 46 for this event worth pointing out that the pace has slowed down just a little bit in the second quarter after it was frenetic in quarter number one. <laughs> so much fun to watch though in terms of what we saw out of the what another unbelievable individual effort by Alyssa DiGiacinta. That's a heck of a play. That is a heck of a play. Team Down on the turf. Able to get right back up and continue her original motion after she was on the turf. That's the most important part. She hits the turf, gets right back up, and is right back on goal. Coaches talk about just having that want to, and that is one of those moments where you fall down, you hit the ground, you're just immediately back up, pushing towards the goal. That is someone who would not be denied. Alyssa DiGiacinto. Preparing for her freshman year at Lindenwood. She had previously played club for Team Ontario. And now they get possession right back on top of it. So a chance for Canada to create a little separation here. And we have not seen any separation so far in this first half. It has been so even again. I think the one thing Team USA and the draw control circle have had a bit of the edge. But Canada has been very smart and efficient Perfect. on their offensive opportunities. Jillian Goldie with the goal. And what a vision to your point from Jillian Black across the field to see Goldie cutting. Watch it one more time. Black holds it, then Goldie makes her move. She's completely unmarked. Able to hammer it home and make it 7-5. You have to be able to make that movement off ball to create opportunities. And of course, your teammates have to find you. And that was about as well executed as you could possibly see for Team Canada. Have key back in the draw control circles. So there was a penalty called on Hannah Rudolph, and that might explain a little bit more why it is 
that Goldie was so wide open there, and I have to apologize. That's, of course, the reason why there was no draw control. There's a penalty. There's still 50 seconds remaining on the penalty right now. US, that one hits the post. Yeah, they're not bothering to waste time trying to kill it off, though. That it might still be an error, and I think the penalty probably came up. Team USA now down by two, which, again, I think the largest deficit we've had today is two. And quickly trying to make up some ground diving is number 40, Aliyah Poliski. Again, there was a lot of contact there, but nothing called. And Poliski, we'll watch it one more time. Oh, she just lost it. And that's great recovery defense from McNaughton. McNaughton with the ball loose just swipes it clear. And now Canada with an opportunity to stretch out this lead. And again, it's what we've been talking about. Canada has been so efficient with the offensive opportunities that they've been given. They've had to in a shooting space call. It's going to give Goldie another opportunity. Free position to the point as we go under five minutes. Back to even strength. And Canada getting a little bit of separation. Chance to make it a three-goal game. So Jillian Goldie here on the free position opportunity. And she's gonna, I think, wisely there look to hand off, but look how aggressive Team USA's defense is. A little bit of a, yeah, a little razzle circus dazzle. shot there, or perhaps pass. Canada, I think, lucky to hang on to possession, but those are certainly the things the fans love to see when they're successful. Well, McNaughton felt that she had two defenders come with her, so somebody needed to be open, and I don't blame her at all for trying to pull that off. As much as we say it's razzle-dazzle, it's probably a smart pass if there isn't a help defender coming over there to slow it down. So Canada will hang on to possession under four minutes remaining in our first half, which has just absolutely flown by given the quality of play we have seen on the field, all the goal scoring, all the great individual moments, and all the great team moments for these two squads. Canada's really started to seize control here in the later stages of the second quarter. And breaking free, but hitting the post. Team Canada, we're finally going to get a whistle. Haslam had everything she wanted there. Got free, got a look right in front of goal. Just put it off the top bar. So Team USA with some work to do here on this possession. As they will work the ball up the field. It's been a little while since they have now been on offense. And coming back into the contest is Caitlin Davies. It was nervy for a second. Callahan's able to get it back, but it's gotten kind of a little sloppy and don't know if they're feeling a little bit of that two-goal deficit at the moment. Callahan ends up giving it away anyway. That's Brittany Colangelo defensively for Canada. And we've talked about how wonderful Canada has been in working the ball up the field the clearance game but a big defensive play by Team USA Jordan Harrison getting over there the sophomore who's headed to Michigan after starting a career at Richmond where she was on the Atlantic 10 all rookie team this season very nice and, and again the scramble situation these feel like kind of nervy moments so we talked about with a running clock a three goal deficit going towards the half is not a good situation to be in harrison steps up stems the tide gets the stop the team usa needed team usa trying to create some openings here with their passing because i think they've recognized how strong this canada defense is they've been able to come up with some defensive stops. Bridget Duffy, though, she's almost unstoppable. That's a really righteous whip, too. She gets free going to her right, and she still is able to bring that thing back and get Team even USA more power on it as she places Bridget it perfectly. Duffy. Watch the shot again. Obviously, she's got all the momentum going as she's running hard right, and she's got a little bit of space to get free, but she still just creates even more torque with how quickly she brings her stick out front and places it perfectly to get it back to a one-goal game. 
That's a big moment for Team USA because I think being down by one feels very differently than being down by two in this event. Madison Smith will be back in the draw control circle and certainly when you are the team that is down if you know that you have that ability in the draw control circle to really control there it also makes things feel a little less scary in that moment when you're finding yourself down a couple of goals. No doubt and for Duffy it's her first goal of the day and I just keep coming back to her as being one of the players that really stands out to me is very much on the Team USA radar at the moment. There's been a lot of the Madison show for Team USA in this first half. Madison Smith and Madison Epke have and, put on a clinic. And more of Duffy, too, right? After she comes away with it on the wing, she's in trouble. She's covered two players all over. Her. She's so physical. She's able to just bully her way through that double. And Tresca able to hand off. Got to go quickly here. Weissman. Back behind goal, looking for the cutter. It was a nice idea trying to connect with Allison Riley. But Canada will come up with it. Nine seconds remaining. They're going to have to hurry. You don't blame the U.S. for going quickly the other way, and that's unfortunate for Canada. Duffy will just chuck it downfield, but nothing's going to be able to turn it. He's not going to be able to turn that into anything. What a start to the 2023 Fall Classic. This is everything we expected it to be. Team Canada up by one. We'll take a quick break. We will be right back with some halftime action here at Tierney Field. Every player knows the skills you learn on the field can be the foundation for anything you choose to do in life. Thank you for connecting me to a greater community. We're growing beyond goals on the field. And our futures are united. So thank you, lacrosse. For inspiring me to be me. We are better, safer, and wiser together. And we're building a stronger future for everyone. to have MedStar as our partner. You know, MedStar is the biggest provider of sports medicine services in the Mid-Atlantic. We're fortunate we cover the Ravens, the Orioles, the Wizards, the Capitals, 15 colleges and universities. One of the biggest flags I think this organization can fly is being very proactive about health and safety as compared to just about any sporting organization I've worked with over my 30-year career. MVP You're watching the 2023 Fall Classic. We'll be right back with more action here from Tierney Field. Michael Sowers. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. you learn on the field can be the foundation for anything you choose to do in life. Thank you for connecting me to a greater community. We're growing beyond goals on the field. And our futures are united. So thank you, lacrosse. For inspiring me to be me. We are better, safer, and wiser together. 
and we're building a stronger future for everyone. We're thrilled to have MedStar as our partner. You know, MedStar is the biggest provider of sports medicine services in the Mid-Atlantic. We're fortunate we cover the Ravens, the Orioles, the Wizards, the Capitals, 15 colleges and universities. One of the biggest flags I think this organization can fly is being very proactive about health and safety as compared to just about any sporting organization I've worked with over my 30-year career. Welcome back to U.S. Lacrosse Headquarters. It is halftime of our first matchup, Team USA, Team Canada, the U-20 teams, Monica Moore alongside Glenn Clark. And Glenn, we knew that we were going to see some outstanding lacrosse in the first half. These two teams did not disappoint. They came out firing eight combined goals in the first quarter. Absolutely no separation. The U.S. got a little sloppy offensively in the second quarter, gave the ball away a couple of times, allowed Canada the opportunity to try to pull away, but they responded when they needed to late to make sure that this is a close tight game going in the second half. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of our first half highlights. There were so many to choose from, but Team Canada got off to such a quick start. Rylan Haslam wasted no time with our first goal of the event. It's almost like they were shot out of a cannon out of the start of the first quarter. But of course, Team USA found the answer pretty quickly. They benefited a lot from their work in the draw control circle, and they had really good balance and diversity on offense that was alexis Vitresco. yeah the draw control was such a story and we don't have official stats here but they were dominant at the draw control and that really set the tone for everything that they did in the first half and usually when you don't win the draw control statistic you might find yourself down by a number of goals but it was team canada's ability to just create those dynamic moments lauren black found a goal there in the first quarter for Team Canada, and they had such good balance, such good diversity. Lexi Jenkins also getting into the mix. And the U.S. needed answers. And this was a really daring move, just putting the head down and getting in front by Poliski in order to convert. They needed that at that point. And then the only multi-goal scorer of the game so far, Maggie Wiseman, getting her second from the free position. But Canada started to edge away just a little bit and again it was the offensive efficiency the good decision making there it was morgan white and converting with the extra attacker as well this was awesome <laughs> from dg Asinto. ends up on the turf waste no time right back up right back into action and then there's the extra attacker goal there were so many good ones, but I do have to say that the DiGiacento one was one of my favorites in the first half. But Team USA, credit them, coming back strong. Bridget Duffy, we were so impressed with her. She had a lot of good looks. Finally got that big goal there at the end, but the one thing we know for sure, she's one to watch. She's a complete player, too. It's not just all offense, and I think that's what you like most about a talented offensive player. We know she's a capable goal scorer, but the little things that we saw late in the half, her taking on double teams, forcing the issue, protecting the ball, getting them into their offense. Bridget Duffy is, has such a bright future within this sport. She really does. So many impressive players to watch. We're going to take another quick break. We will be right back with second half action. Every player knows the skills you learn on the field can be the foundation for anything you choose to do in life. Thank you for connecting me to a greater community. We're growing beyond goals on the field. And our futures are united. So thank you, Lacrosse. For inspiring me to be me. We are better, safer, and wiser together. 
and we're building a stronger future for everyone. Welcome back to Tierney Field as we prepare for the start of the second half. Some of the Team USA players already back out on the field and just as expected, looks like we're going to get some goalkeeper changes. Warming up in net for Team Canada is Ali Wolston. And out on the field for Team USA is J.J. Suriano. So certainly looking like we're going to see a couple different goalkeepers. And in an international event like this, you certainly expect that. And I think these two coaches just realizing they wanted to give the keepers time to settle in and then they'll mix things up in the second half these events are tough you want to win the game and especially when we're talking about u.s canada as we said in international across there is no greater rivalry women's men's than than usa canada as you look at the amazing crowd here at tierney field but this particular event is more important for seeing as much of these players as you possibly can as you try to decide who might be elevated to the next world championship cycle, who's going to be part of next year's U20 world championship teams. And as we keep talking about, that, that lingering, you know, 10,000 pound <laughs> overwhelming factor of the Olympics now as we wait officially on Monday, we should get the final word. Uh, it seems as though that's where we're headed for LA 28, but yeah. So for J.J. Siriano, who's an opportunity, a local product out of Bryn Mawr, going to be playing at Maryland now moving forward, a great opportunity for her to play here at USA Lacrosse in a U-20 game and for her to try to take a step towards getting on the radar and competing at a higher level, which will not be easy given the amount of competition at the goalie position in the USA Lacrosse program. Well, that's right. That, that is the problem there is there is so much tough competition, but certainly, you know, she's a fantastic young talent and certainly going to just continue to develop her game at the collegiate level as back in the draw control circle for Team USA is Madison Team Smith Canada, who we were so one impressed one with one Emma Torkoff in the draw control circle for Team, Team Canada. Canada Canada's had no answers. They have thrown whoever they wanted to out there. They have had no answers to the dominant performance on the draws for Team USA. Well it's a difficult thing to do whether it's Smith or whether it's Epke. They've both been phenomenal. Well, how about that? That's right. Team Canada finding an answer there with Emma Torkoff. Throws a word to Emma Torkoff. Torkoff, a sophomore this coming season at Albany, and she did claim 16 draw controls in her freshman season with the Great Danes. So Team Canada coming into, and we're going to get a quick turnover here to start the second half for Canada. Interesting to see if the Canadian side maybe a little bit disappointed that they weren't able to take advantage of that multi-goal lead late. This, remember, they had a two-goal lead and possession late in the second quarter. And I don't know if the conversation was a bit of the, we let them off the hook. But that's what it felt like late in the quarter as the U.S. gets an opportunity to try to tie it up. And we saw Team USA be fairly efficient at the end of the first half as they were looking to cut into the deficit. And that was a great find right there. As it was, that was a tough catch. It's a tough pass, but a smart pass. Because again, you're, you're passing to a teammate who's unmarked. But then it's a really good save by Ralston on a shot low. And you love shooting low. You love the bounce shots. Just in that particular instance, it wasn't converted. Hannah Rudolph will hand off to Smith. Woo! So much power behind that shot. Madison Smith, she's been a standout today. That thing had flames coming off. Of it. First goal of the game for Madison Smith, the Northwestern freshman. Watch it again. Shoo! That is something to see, and that's certainly something that's going to get you on the radar right there, because when you get that much power behind your shot, those are very difficult ones for goalkeepers to stop. So she's going to get a quick break. Lots of high fives over on the sidelines. Madison Smith. So it will be Madison Epke in the draw control circle for Team USA. I, I'm not trying to give Charlotte North all the credit because there are other players. Dana Doby, of course, a Canadian legend. But the way that we have seen the women's game evolve and more firepower from further out with some of these shots, and now you see these young players who say, oh, well, if that's something that can be done, well, we're going to start working that's on that right. and see if we can do it too. They will put hours and hours and hours into perfecting 
that shot and I agree with you certainly it's not that all the credit goes to Charlotte North but Charlotte North is one of the ones that the youngsters have just really tried to emulate her game as we see another goal for Maggie Weisman at trick party for Maggie Weisman her third of the day she is putting on a show and a great start to this third quarter for Team USA and good fake to her left, able to get her body free back to the right, shoots a cross body that opposite post. That change of direction, that's just so much skill. Very difficult for a defender to stay with you. She is really getting it done for Team USA and credit the Americans, they're back out on top by one. And they were in trouble late in the second quarter. This thing was going the wrong way, but they responded, they held tight, they kept it close. And they have now started to seize control early, early in the third. Epke again in the draw control circle with Emma Torkov. And Epke, she can just pull the ball right to the side where she can get to it. It's like art right now. It really is. It's like clockwork. Great five. Ooh. They just could not connect with Madison Rassus. It was Vantresca who was looking for her. Rassus was wide open, but she's going to get it back. And that was just a great little hesitation there. Alexis Ventresca just getting the goalkeeper to commit and then taking that shot. That's a savvy play by Ventresca. Second of the game for Ventresca. Devere gets the assist, and this will be one of the easier goals that she'll score. But to your point, again, gets the goalkeeper moving, doesn't make it easier for her to know where she's going to go as the Northwestern Wildcat stretches the lead out largest lead of the day for the u.s now that's a tough pass to execute too for lindsey devere she did very well falling to the ground withstanding the contact and still getting that pass to the right spot to ventresca now how does canada respond monica you know this is the first time they've been down by two and with the u.s being so successful in the circle this is what we've been talking about in terms of you, you can't get those offensive opportunities because the u.s not only winning the draws but they're converting offensively but canada they've had their best success with Torkoff in the circle Charles controlled by bridget duffy it's just bridget duffy on the circle so strong we talk about all the things that have impressed us about duffy the wing play has been excellent she's been super helpful flying in when the draws have been prolonged battles caitlin davies Ooh. really asserting herself we're gonna get a card there so on top of everything else now an extra attacker for team usa as brzezniski was hit with the yellow for team canada and they already have seized control here in the third quarter now an opportunity to stretch the lead out so we'll see what Team USA does here as they keep cycling in different players. It's a dangerous pass. Which is certainly what you don't want to do no. is have the turnover so early in to the player up moment. That's great defense. Great player down defense by Team Canada. Oh my goodness, Maggie Cuddy. So give DG Asinto a lot of credit in there too laying out when that ball got loose canada gets possession back and they're going to go to work try to put on a bit of a cardio show show off that you can run away again you can't execute player down defense much better than what we just saw out of team canada not even allowing the u.s any and, good look at goal and an important time to remind no possession clock so you can run out the rest of this penalty Ooh. You can't do that, though. You cannot do that. That is unlucky for Team Canada because they had Team USA right where they wanted them. But aggressive defensive play. Jenna Smelly is going to get whistled for the foul. Alexis Ventresca has really been getting the worst of it on some of these plays, but she is a very scrappy player, really can withstand that. This, is, this has not been a textbook extra attacker offense <laughs> from Team USA either. Down to 25 seconds on the penalty. May not have been something they had time to work on with the very limited time that they had. And again, throwing the ball away. You just can't hang a pass like that. There's no reason to take anything off that. She's wide open. Epke's wide open. Why are you taking anything off that pass in order to let it hanging for just an extra second? 
And we really haven't had that many things to be that critical of today. But point. I think the U.S. on that player up situation i think they'd like to have those moments back did not execute that the way they wanted to and now canada once again so assertive towards goal but a big stop by jj suriano first save for suriano after she comes in denying nesbitt the talented freshman just finished up her first season at bucknell long outlet pass as team usa trying to quickly Clear the ball up the field. Well, you wondered too, Monica, if that was going to be a turning point. So the U.S. had all the momentum to start the third quarter, but then they fail in a two-minute power play. And so you wondered if that was going to be what would galvanize the Canadians here to get going in the second half. They're just not able to take advantage of it. The U.S. gets another opportunity to extend the lead to three. And so trying to get the screen there, and Team USA will have to reset we talked a lot about it that lack of a possession clock which really you, you start to feel that i think we've gotten so used to that in the college game and we've seen a little bit of longer possessions in this half it seems like in the first half both teams going. so quickly going to goal but bridget duffy she's going she absolutely is she's and she's going. gone uh, we, we can only sing so many praises of bridget <laughs> duffy we have been effusive and you can see why she's so special and just makes one move is able to get a little bit wide and then quickly right around the defender Brzezinski in front fires at home you know she was obviously on a lot of people's radars after her last collegiate season but certainly in this event now on this stage showing what she can do time out, team constantly canada. as team canada is going to call the first time out that we've had of this event and i think given now that team usa out, has right? the it's biggest lead of down. the game this is a pivotal moment for canada team. can they solve the some problems in the draw control circle otherwise they're going to have to make some more defensive stops and as we keep talking about with the running clock this is you get in the danger zone you'd say all right it's only a three goal game in the third quarter well in the college game we'd say you're right in there but as you point out the draws have been just a nightmare for canada today and so without being able to get the ball back that quickly you're gonna have to do something something here or else the clock's gonna go the wrong way U.S. has scored, outscored Canada 4-0 in the second half. They've been absolutely amazing in terms of converting all of these goals. It's been lots of different players getting involved, unselfish play. This is Wiseman for one of the three she's had this afternoon. And this is just turned in a hurry. And this was the loose ball goal where DeVere did really well to pop it out to Ventresca after they had nearly given it away one pass earlier and then bridget duffy doing what bridget Duff, bridget duffy does she's been such a storyline canada certainly controlled the first half you felt like they had the momentum they had the edge second half so far has been all team usa kelly amante hiller and her staff and elliot Widden from colorado tim mccormick the new head coach here at johns hopkins locally and michelle tomolo from army getting a really good look and i think they've got to be really happy about some of these pieces I, I would almost start to bet on a couple of these players that we've seen on this field today that will definitely be a part of the 2026 world championship team you have to imagine just given the exceptional skill we've seen out on the field some of these players are just so dynamic in terms of what they do it, it has been a great event so far. What a way to kick things off just seeing this is really what the future of lacrosse looks like. No question. You saw on the other sideline, Allison Daly leading the, uh, the, the Canadian U-20 team, assistant at Louisville. She's got Emily Bosuno, pit head coach on her staff, Rachel McKinnon, as well as Kaylin Morissette and Kylie White. Epke. I think she earned that yeah, chance to number, take right? the quick shot after what she's done in the draw control circle. May not have been uh, that's the difficult part the with, no, with no backup, <laughs> too, right? Now you're giving them a gift out of the timeout of letting them, you know, breathe again and try to go down and score and get back within two. But I hear you. You just won the draw control. You have a head of steam, and you just want to go to goal. I don't think it was a bad decision. <laughs> I really don't. I think it was a good decision. It's got to put that home if you're going to take that shot. So Canada desperately needing to find an answer into traffic, but we're going to get 
the whistle. And I think Lauren Black is one of the players you want to step up and assert herself offensively because Canada knows that she can deliver in these dicey moments where you really need to start cutting into the deficit. Yeah, pretty critical territory right now. Is, is we don't want to oversell it. There's still a lot of time. Great feed. And what a finish for Team Canada. Beautiful pass, Ryan Adkins on the finish. Team Canada goal, score by number 113. First goal of the day Ryan for Adkins. Adkins. Cutting off the goal line. Not a lot of angle to work with. She still goes near post, and I think Suriano thought that maybe she had just enough of that protected to force her to the opposite side, but a smart decision and a good finish. Now that was a tougher shot to convert for Ryan Adkins. And a big moment for Canada. The assist to Black. And back in the draw control circle again is Jillian Goldie, who we saw a lot of in the first half in the circle for the Canadians. So they needed that goal, right? They that was they had to finally get on the board here in the second half. Yeah, start working start. their way. Yeah. Can't finish fit, follow up well after scoring the goal, but they desperately needed that tally to get things going here in the second half. It's just unlucky for Canada that they really didn't get the chance on that draw because they had the momentum. And now Team USA, an opportunity to extend this lead once again. Getting some good movement through the middle. And now they'll look back up top. This player is trying to go 1v1. A lot of power behind that shot. For Grace Ooh, and Leonard. Really? I thought Poliski had inside position in the race to the line there, but they decide to give it to Adkins. Rian Adkins wins possession for Canada. And Canada, once again, on these clears, they've been very efficient, and they have been so good at hanging on to possession, getting the ball up the field, and now getting into their offensive set. I thought one of the things that was going to be interesting to see here in the second half, at what point if you're Team USA, do you change your thought process and hold on to possession a little bit longer? Again, it's how do you measure getting a win against your rival versus just wanting players to be moving and doing things that you want to see them do in an offense. And I, I thought the first half we expected them to go a little bit quicker, but I wondered if at some point in the second half, Team USA might start slowing down the pace a little bit. Black again had two defenders pushing her to the outside. She's really asserting herself here in the second half. With Black being the one at the 11 meter arc, it's so much more difficult for Team USA. You want to crash down on her because you know how capable she is as a scorer. And she just showed you the last time that she's pretty good as a distributor as well. Has the complete skill set. Black bided her time. Soriano coming up with the Team USA stop and wanted to go with the quick clear, but it was into traffic. Team USA lucky to hang on to it. Kylie Colbert quickly getting the ball up ahead. It felt to me, Monica, you tell me if you disagree, like she started spinning her wheels a little bit. Like she got in the middle, instead of going hard at the cage, she almost left herself room to maybe reconsider her decision and ended up not getting quite as much on the shot because of it. I think that's right. Soriano right there. And now Team USA once again a chance to stretch this lead back out. So for Canada, I think that's the other thing. So not winning the draw controls, and now I think feeling like maybe not taking advantage of some of the opportunities they've gotten in the second half, because that's a very different story than what we saw in the first half. Americans not forcing the issue. Well, as I say that, now they work back inside. <laughs> that always happens. Cameron Callahan with a great finish there. The Cincinnati standout Team USA goal by coming three, off Cameron a freshman Cameron. of the year season Assistant where she scored 56 goals, Leonard. and you can certainly see why. Yeah, Grace Ann Leonard on the assist. That's Callahan's first goal of the day, Leonard's first point, and so you get a few more players involved. One Leonard, the the third. incoming freshman at North Carolina, originally from Shoreham, New York. You see just how loaded with talent these teams are. As you get further on to the bench and you still have high quality ACC caliber talent, pretty remarkable. Madison Smith back in the draw control circle with Jillian Goldie. And Smith again, just the self draw. It's 
there really aren't any more words, I think, to talk about what the U.S. has done in the draw control circle today. It's been the biggest strength. And now from being down one goal, quick ball movement, that shot just to the outside. We got exactly what you wanted if you're Hannah Rudolph, just not quite able to put it on target. But backed up by Team USA. Again, got to go quickly, just 20 seconds. Ventresca, good find, but a big save. But we're going to get a whistle here. And I thought there was a push. Bridget Duffy again. What a storyline she has been. And it will be Bridget Duffy on the free position opportunity. Still time. Don't have to force this. Still time with 16 seconds. Or you can just go do that. I mean, that's the other option. Bridget Duffy. I would not necessarily call it forcing it. It's just doing what you do so well. Take another look at this. She is just unbelievable. So much confidence. Straight to goal. She's been an X Factor. She's joined the hat trick party today. She and Wiseman, both three goals each. U.S. has their largest lead of the day. That one right off the inside of the opposite post. Can't place that much better than that. Almost nothing that you can do about it if you're Allie Ralston. And we were talking about it for Team USA. They really had to manage the clock. They didn't have a lot of time. Well, Bridget Duffy took that to heart. She wasted no time in getting Team USA another goal on the scoreboard. Now Team Canada looking for a last second effort here. Lauren Black cutting forward, but she was well defended. Team Canada eight. So at the conclusion of our third quarter, Team USA, this was their quarter, leading Team Canada 12-8. We'll take another quick break, and we'll be right back to Tierney Field. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you... That future. That future. That future. That future. <laughs> ready for fourth quarter action let's talk about one of the stars of the day Bridget Duffy no surprise that she has performed so well but particularly in that third quarter I thought she was outstanding she just does everything and we're gonna see the three goals that she scored but as we talked about she's been helpful on the wing play on the draws Bridget Duffy is a player with an extraordinary opportunity to make her mark as far as Team USA lacrosse is concerned moving forward
And we are back underway. Madison Epke picking up right where she oh, left off Madison with Epke. another draw control win for Team USA. And right now, the Americans with the four goal lead having that ability to win the draw controls, that's going to be huge coming down the stretch. The quarter, yeah, the quarter changed everything. U.S. outscores Canada 6 1 in the third quarter, and they start to finally seize control. Great decision to jump in front. It's just great anticipation on that read, knowing exactly where the ball was going to go. But Canada. You can, you're going to have to take some more risks, and that's what Jillian Goldie's thinking. Like, you got to be willing to try to lay it out there to make some plays at this point. Well, and speaking of taking some risks, they went with a really powerful shot there by Rylan Haslam, just and off the mark. A little bit further outside, too. But that's what they're going to be looking to do is create some of those moments here, realizing that while there is plenty of time with this running clock, they're going to have to find these moments as quickly as they can and another big play Suriano by Suriano. Suriano impressed. That's two really nice saves that she's made here in the second half. Great clear by Team USA going straight to goal. Caitlin Davies. The sophomore from Florida, head full of steam, a heart full of promise, and a ball in the back of the net. She just never looked anywhere else, was laser focused on putting that ball in the net. I mean, you can't do it much better than that on the clear. And I say she was laser focused. I have no <laughs> doubt that she looked to see if she had helped either side a defender coming at her. She didn't. She had the path. It was right there waiting for her. She gets her first goal of the evening. And the U.S. extends what was already their largest lead of the game. And you see the clock running. And this is what we were talking about earlier, Monica. It's so difficult in the international game to find a path back from down four or five as this game gets in the later stages. Well, that's right. And, of course, the, the path back, it is the draw control circle, right? That's where you make up that ground. But we've seen some good moments by Emma Torkoff in the draw control circle. Team USA is just so strong. Madison Smith, it, it is oh, hard to stop her in the circle. And I think Mike McNaughton even got away with one in there, too. Is they're just trying to throw anything at Team USA to get possession. And again, it'll be interesting to see at what point this Team USA may change the strategy. I get it. This is an exhibition game, and so the result necessarily isn't what matters, although the result looks like it's going to go their way. Cameron Callahan with her second of the afternoon, and really Team Scoring USA team not USA really holding the ball 20. here, not really slowing oh. down the offensive pace. Instead, just asserting themselves. And another great goal, another assertive goal, and Team USA now up by six. Monica, my thought would be, at, at Wins, we're going to watch the Davies goal from a second ago, where, again, she just takes it herself all the way in. But my thought would be, at what point are you trying to teach good habits for play in bigger international events? And at what point do you say, hey, this is what we would do if this was next summer's World Championships, so it's what we want you to do today, because a lot of you are going to be on the field for that event and if we have a five six goal lead in the fourth quarter we do want to make sure that we are plenty capable of slowing things down and working on the clock in that situation i think that's uh, certainly a consideration as team canada comes up with the draw control win quickly finding lauren black in the circle and canada you see they're looking to waste no time right now they don't have any to waste they that's exactly right really looking to get that movement through the middle everyone's looking for the cutter who's going straight to goal lauren black getting a little bit of a screen there yeah getting exactly what you want that's really well set up tremendous screen Again, we got a situation where, unfortunately, the player who said it is not listed on our roster, so I'd like to tell you who it was, but we don't have a number 34 here. In the but we saw it. We noticed it. We saw how smart the play was. And Canada doing some good things. Lauren Black will hand off after drawing a lot of defenders. That's another great save. Suriano, and I thought she might have been screened on top of it, so I thought it was a very smart shot for McNaughton. Suriano has it checked out a couple times. She's in trouble. She's got to get back to the cage. Yeah. Very fortunate. Wow. What Very fortunate. a series of events right there. Gutsy play by Suriano. 
Canada trying to take advantage. Uh, look, Lauren Black, that's a difficult angle, right? That is almost no angle at all to work with when she pulls the trigger on that shot. You feel for her because you want to get the shot off as quickly as you can before the goalie comes back. Was there room to maybe take a step or two there before you pull the trigger? I think there might have been. There might have been. I think in that moment when you're so focused on trying to react quickly, it's hard to make that mental decision. But Canada likes a good defense here, trying to get some extra opportunities here in our fourth quarter. Yeah, that one probably more of an unforced error, just throwing the ball away. And that's, we go back to that conversation we just had a second ago about valuing the ball and possession. And are these things you want to make sure you're talking about with this team and these players? Right now, Team USA, I, I'm not suggesting they're leaving the door open because it would be extraordinary for a team, especially international play, to rally back from down six with nine minutes remaining. But you don't want to leave it even slightly ajar. With full movement by Team Canada and a big finish by Jillian McNaughton. Starting to think that these might be some of her Johns Hopkins teammates that have come out <laughs> to support her right next to us. McNaughton, who played on the world championship team that finished in the silver medal position back in 2022, that missed last season at Johns Hopkins, gets on the board for the first time here today. She definitely has some fans in the crowd, that's for sure. But you know what, when you're playing either close to where you live or close to where you go to school, you certainly expect to have that. She was also part of the uh, U19 World Championship roster for Team Canada back in 2019 so lots of international experience expect her to remain a part of the program for time to come and i know they're expecting big things at johns hopkins so madison Epke back in the draw control circle with emma torkoff and canada starting to figure some things out that's a good sign for team canada but again not a lot of time yeah, to it waste. Too little too late monica and great defense there madison rassis Involved. Yeah, getting a clean ground ball. But to your point, Glenn, and right now, we're, because Team USA had a bit of a breakaway there, I think they were going to go straight to goal, but I was getting ready to go to your point. To, at what juncture do you just bring the ball out? Look, I don't blame them at all. Rastis is Absolutely. wide open. They don't connect on the pass. But it's, in other situations where it's a little more settled, is it the moment where you get a bit more organized and you think about how you would potentially manage a late game situation if you needed to. I want to make it very clear. I'm just asking questions when we talk about this. I'm not suggesting there is a right or wrong here because we keep coming back to this is an exhibition event. And for all of these players, this is an opportunity for them to show what it is they're capable of doing. So I can understand if on the, the sideline they're saying, no, we want you to keep, keep running the offense. Keep going through it. This is your moment. But I, I just wonder at what point you say, hey, but we also need to work on, this is an important part of the game too, is making sure that we value possession late in international play when there is a, a, you know, a running clock and no possession clock to make sure we hold on. And they have not seemed to prioritize that necessarily here in this fourth quarter. Another great defensive play there, Maggie Cuddy. But Canada gonna have to be careful and really value their possessions because they're hard earned at this juncture of the game and you see good defensive pressure there for team usa and they will come up with the loose ball both ventresca and rassis all over it in that spot and it's been all team usa in the second half this has been they, whatever the conversation was <laughs> at halftime, bottle it up and save it. I was thinking the same thing, but obviously Kelly Amante Hiller, she's had a lot of those conversations yeah, right. with teams throughout her history as a coach, yeah. is that one. It's going to trickle in apparently. Yep. It looked like it hit the crossbar, but Madison Rass is scoring her first goal of the event. Watch it one more time and see, see exactly what happened here. I thought Ralston had it covered. Just pops out, and oh, she couldn't find it. Yep, that's exactly. Oh, uh, that's unfortunate. And she's one of the younger players on this roster, getting some incredible experience here as part of the national program. 
That's going to be unfortunate for her. She'll be sick about that one. But this is just being out here and playing in this environment is going to do so much for a young, young player who still has years to come to continue developing. Well, that's exactly right. Okay, so I just trying to do... I, I was to understand there would be no math, but I believe <laughs> it's 9-2 that the U.S. has outscored Canada here in the second half, Monica. It really is impressive. And again, I... I I think you would expect that just given the draw controls, the opportunities the U.S. has gotten. But I think they got a little bit more efficient offensively, too, in terms of protecting the ball and getting the looks that they wanted in the second half. And that potentially is one of the things that Kelly Monte Hiller and her staff talked about at halftime in terms of getting those good looks and valuing the possessions that you fight so hard to get when you win oh, them from the draw control the circle. I'm just sort of giggling thinking about Kelly Monte's big game experience. <laughs> oh, I don't I mean, know. She's certainly a been bit. on big stages a couple of times, a couple of times right? What, eight national titles. <laughs> eight as a coach, two as a player. USA just piling it on now here in the fourth quarter as this one has gotten it's completely a away from Team Alexis Canada. Ventresca. Ventresca joining the hat trick party again. Just a hard dodge to her right and then shooting back across her body right into that corner. I have to say, Alexis Ventresca has been a standout to me because it, it's been all game long. It's really been start to finish that high level of play and execution out on the field. And of course, she's someone that I also feel like has such a bright future, so much upside in addition to what we've already seen from her today. It's got to be making it. Kelly Monte Hiller is going to be excited about her future, <laughs> not only obviously in the national program, but of course, in the Big Ten and trying to win more national titles at Northwestern. Lindsay Devere. Lindsay Devere doing a great job there. She's had some really good moments as well, and I think we expected she would be one of the youngsters that would really stand out in this event. Just looking at her resume, and she has not disappointed on the afternoon. It's probably worth us pointing out that this week, Team USA decided to split the U-20 roster into two different teams. So the team that's going to go against Northwestern tomorrow will be a completely different group of players. So all of this talent that you've seen out on the field, that's just half of what they have to offer in the U-20 program alone. And I think really the right decision because it allows players to get into the rhythm and the flow of the game without having to manage the roster so much. And have given these athletes out on the field much more time, I think, to shine, which is really one of the most important things about this event. I thought the Andrade had actually done a pretty nice job, but I think she came up a little bit too high there defensively, and so another free position set up, and it did seem like maybe Team USA was more inclined to just keep rolling these out. And of course, as soon as I say that, <laughs> that's right. They've been wrong. Exact I think opposite. every time I've pointed out any trend in this game, Monica. I think every single one, I think I'm over on the day. Well, perhaps the trend is no trend then as we get a very clever shot by Lindsey DeVere. Yeah, that's fancy. Didn't work, but it was fancy. It was fun to watch though. And really Team USA right now just taking these shots at will, but it's gonna go to Team Canada with about a minute and a half left here in our fourth quarter. Wiseman, one of three players who have had tricks on the day. Penalty. And so Canada get an opportunity here. This is just window dressing at this point, obviously. But it looks like we're going to get timeout on the field. Second timeout called by Team Canada. Just to make sure that they get everything they want out of this last minute and 47 seconds and you think this is a really big coaching moment i think for this team canada coaching staff in terms of just really explaining to the team in terms of these moments what they want to see i assume that the conversation is okay i want you to look up at the scoreboard it actually says 10 9. that's what the score is right now and you've got to go down and convert in order to tie the game up and we all know that's not actually what the case is but i assume that's what this conversation is we want to treat this like the game is on the line. We want to see you go out and convert in a big spot. This was the Lauren Black shot that, oh, just missed in the side netting. And fantastic defense 
right there by Canada to get the ball back. You see, just to the inside, just a couple of inches away. You know what? I'll, I'll take it back after looking at it again. She really didn't have anywhere to go. She really had to shoot it as soon as she got the ball and just didn't have the angle on it. But yeah, Suriano had done so many nice things, sometimes trying to do a little bit too much. That's not your ball. At some point, when that prolonged ground ball continues, you got to get back in the cage. And if one of your teammates comes away with it, great. If not, live to fight another day. At least be set up that you don't leave the cage completely unmanned. That's right. And that's a great learning moment there for Soriano in terms of how to manage. He made really spectacular saves like in the second Absolutely. half. Absolutely. We've been so impressed with her because. I think for these goalkeepers, a lot of times coaches talk about making the saves that you should make. I think she's made some that a lot of people wouldn't have made in this event. So it'll be interesting to see what they dialed up here. This doesn't, it's not really a big moment, but they're going to treat it like it's a big moment. Allison Daly and her staff go down, try to convert, try to do something here, and then it's like a small victory in a practice situation. You got the job done. Well, you have the player up situation. A good pressure trying to force the ball out of bounds by Team USA. A harassing ride from Poliski. It started back there. They got the turnover, but then no quarter being given whatsoever by Maggie Cuddy. And you can see how fired up they are. They This is a practice spot. They talked about it. They want to convert here, even though it's not going to make a difference in the game. Well, that's exactly right, but they're treating it as such, and you're just seeing how locked in Team Canada is right now on this possession. Team USA trying to match them in terms of their defense and the laser focus that we're seeing out of the Canadians because they are really looking to make the right play, the smart play. That's the other thing that jumped out at me. Oh. It's, of course, again, every time we say something, Monica, we're going to have to just stop. We're just going to have to stop. And anticipate nothing. Let the play what speak for do. itself. Your point was well taken, is that they were not forcing something just going to the cage, which a lot of teams would do in late-game situations. They were trying to execute. That was a practice spot for them. We want the shot because we want this to be the the game-tying play, the game-winning play that we might use in another situation. So now you see Team USA, they're stretched out a bit, very far from goal, looking inside, but really that was a tough pass right there for Team USA, and now Team Canada. And one more chance for them to try to run whatever it was they were looking to run the last time. Less than 20 seconds, now they have to go in a hurry. Good defensive pressure, we're gonna get a whistle there. Just really not allowing a lot of room to maneuver. What a second half for Team USA. Really brilliant performance. They just cleaned up a couple of things on the offensive end to become a bit more efficient and just didn't have the angle there in terms of where her shoulders were turned. Great cut down the middle. They couldn't find her second chance opportunity. Goes wide. And that will end our first game here at the U.S. Lacrosse Fall Classic. What a good one it was. I think the scoreboard does not exactly tell the story. It was so close in the first half. Highly competitive uh, into the third quarter. Team USA really put their clamps down late in that third quarter, started to pull away. They scored 10 goals in the second half, outscoring Canada 10-2. Dominant performance in the Americans in the second half, but it was very competitive. Excellent effort at the draw control for Team USA. And Bridget Duffy, Wiseman, really impressive. And, and three different American players with hat tricks. Yeah, I mean, I think it all started with the draw control circle. Even when Team USA wasn't as efficient as they wanted to be, that was what they had in their back pocket. But after halftime, I don't know what Kelly Amante Hiller said, but it must have made all the difference. Take a look at Team USA. They score goals in lots of different ways. It was lots of different people just in the flow of the offense. No, they were sharp. And they, look, they were sharp offensively for the most part all day. We talked about the first quarter. They slowed down a little bit in the second quarter. Take away that second quarter. This is about as good offensively as you could ask for a team that's coming together for a weekend. That was Devere on that nice find to Ventresca. We talked so much about her, but number 30, Bridget Duffy. She was one to watch. Another one, the consistency all game long was very good. Bridget Duffy was awesome. I don't know if we get a vote for player of the game, but if we did, that would probably be where my vote would go. I thought she was excellent. It wasn't just her, obviously. 
obviously it was everybody, but she really stood out. She really did. Just in terms of her assertiveness, her confidence, just looking like she belongs on this stage. She was meant to be here. As we saw right there, just determined effort to go on goal and finish. And that's another good one right there by Caitlin Davies. We talked about that laser sharp focus. Great move on the fake from Callahan for her second of the day as they had all sorts of confidence built up in the second half. It's almost like anything we throw at you, we think it's going to work. That was a nice find for Team Canada. Jillian McNaughton on the finish. Yeah, her cheering section here near us was really fired up about <laughs> McNaughton, the Johns Hopkins Blue Jay, getting onto the score sheets. And this is what we were talking about with Ventresca. She was just good all day long. Really did not take a second off in the contest. She was a standout. One of three players who finished with three goals to lead the way for Team USA. So so Team USA will win our first game of this event. We'll be back with many more. Thanks so much for joining us for Glenn Clark. I'm Monica Moore. You're watching the U.S. Lacrosse Fall Classic from Tyranny Field.